Well, it's that time of year again, and the Halloween event update has been released on Arcane Odyssey. No fish this video. Just kidding. This update actually came out surprisingly fast after the release of the Empires, so that's cool. Anyways, there are two main things to talk about in this new update. Those being, one, the Halloween event itself, no freaking duh. And two, the addition of the auction house being usable now. First, the Halloween update. As how it was four years ago during the previous Halloween update in World of Magic, all vegetation terrain like grass and trees in all islands, except Limestone Key for some stupid reason, are now orange. Uh, quick note, I did say all except Limestone Key, which is false. There is some exceptions like this mango isle right here, there is no orange vegetation. Most of the main islands that you would normally find on your sailing adventures or whatever have orange vegetation because of the fall season. But just note, almost all islands have orange vegetation now. Keep that in mind. There's a scroll for the event that shows all the items you need to collect for the reward at the end of it. There's a total of 16 items to collect via quests from new NPCs and a new currency called Candy. There's four quest givers that you need to talk to for these items, and they're spread out into four different islands. There's one on Forest of Cernuno, Ravenna, Accursius Keep, and Cirrus Island, the, the Sky Island. There's also a merchant that sells six of the items that you can buy for candy, which you can get from completing various tasks like bounty hunting, completing treasure charts, diving spots, defeating bosses, etc. The Merchant's at Sailor's Lodge. The total cost to buy all the items is 1,350 candy, which, uh, foreshadowing, it's going to be a pain to get. Now for the actual completion of the event. How I approached it, I just went and got all the quests at once for convenience, like killing multiple birds in one go. But for this video, I'll just go one by one on the details on all quests for each of these new NPCs. For the witch at Forest of Cernuno, you need to find her cat, who was lost in Dark Pine Isle. It shouldn't be that difficult to find them, they're just on the ledge of this spire. Completing this quest gives you spooky candles that you put on your head. For the second quest, the witch asks you to do six treasure charts for some trinkets, giving you an exotic chart to start off with. There is no specific type of what charts to do, so best to just stick with common ones if you want to save time. Completing the quest gives you... That. The final quest needs you to fish up 31 fish for Shadow Bear, the cat. I know, the name is misleading. I don't think I need to explain how fishing works. After finishing the quest, you get... Vtex. Why? I'm not gonna punch the camera again, but why? For the Scarecrow at Revena, you need to collect 66 wheat for them because apparently the farmer forgot or didn't bother with the wheat. You can get wheat in the farm they're put in, if you've completed the farmer's quest beforehand, or in the newly added pumpkin and wheat patches the game put on three different islands. There's one patch in Shell Island, one in Blackreach Island, and two in Forest of Sununo. Completing that quest gives you the Scarecrow trousers. For the second quest, Serena, the Scarecrow, asks you to go deep diving in diving spots because a crow is talking about it or something, I don't know. Completing a diving spot requires you to find all the interactive chests and opening them. The sealed chests you can find in them doesn't count towards completion. Completing the quest gives you a Scarecrow tunic. For the last quest, you'll need to sell 35 sealed chests to give Serena drip, because why not, I guess. Completing this quest gives you the Scarecrow mask. For the pumpkin mage dude in Cirrus Island, the Sky Island, the first quest he gives is to collect a HUNDRED PUMPKINS. I'm not the only one that thinks this is absolutely absurd, right? This quest will take a while, so a good pastime that isn't waiting for pumpkins to respawn is doing the other quests if you got them. And remember, pumpkin patches are in Harvest, Cernuno, Shell, and Blackreach. Completing this quest gives the Indigo Pumpkin Witch Hat which can be re-dyed to a different color if you'd like. The second and final quest is to cook 25 meals that give 75 or more hunger. This may take a bit if you don't have the resources for them, but that's unlikely, since you just collected 100 frickin' pumpkins. Completing the quest gives the Yellow Hollowed 3, which can also be re-dyed to a different color if you'd like. For the Spectre Ghost Guy, which I uh, don't know 
the name too well, you get the urge to kill 13 criminals. Also note that it says kill, not hunt. You do not need to get their poster for the kill to count for this quest. Completing this quest gives the brown back coffin, which can be re-dyed to a different color if you'd like. The second and final quest gives you the urge to kill six bosses. I don't think I need to elaborate further. Completing the quest gives you a little ghost shoulder pal. That, that's it. For the merchant, you need a total of, again, 1,350 candy to buy everything. And the fastest way, according to the general community, is farming Calvis, who gives 22 candy per kill. You could also get candy from selling sealed chests, completing diving spots, treasure charts, and other things. But killing Calvis is faster and getting candy out of all these. The items you can buy are the Garnet Macabre Top Hat, The Ecto Scarf. Orange Skeletal Pauldrons. Dreadful Horns. Black Bat Wings and Crimson Sanguine Cloak. After collecting all the items listed in the scroll, you are rewarded with the Sinister Glare and Jack-O-Lantern Chip Lanterns. The Sinister Glare is an accessory that changes your character's eyes into a glowing red color. It's pretty cool, but I kinda want this to be dialable for the cool swag. Personally, the Dreadful Horns, Sanguine Cloak, Bat Wings, Skeletal Pauldrons, and the Sinister Glare are super cool, while everything else is kind of mid. And the... <sighs> These should go back into the incinerator where they belong. Or for stonks, in the new auction house. The auction works like an auction house, no frickin' duh. People put their items in the auction and they set a price that they think is reasonable, or stupid, and wait for people to buy it. You can probably make big stonks out of this. And that's kind of it. This was the entire update, at least to my knowledge. And that's kind of all I did in the update, so that's what I'm sharing with you. All I really did was just complete the Halloween event across three different files, and I'm going to be working on a fourth one, because, um, you know, I am not missing out on getting little minimum amount of limited seasonals, like I did four years ago. I missed out on, like, the rarest friggin' item in the game, which I could have gotten four years ago if I actually completed the list. I'm still angry at myself about that, but whatever. Can't change the past, but I learned from it, and now... I'm going absolute manic with all these files and getting the Halloween event done across all of them. And also just note, you have plenty of time to get this done. The event ends at November 22nd, so uh, yeah, you got plenty of time. The auction house is a pretty cool thing. The only thing I'm going to do with it though is just like buy incredibly powerful stuff. Sure, it'll probably put a big dent in my 300,000 galleon wallet, but whatever. Anyways, yeah, that's basically all I gotta say about the Halloween update. It's a cool update, don't get me wrong, and the drip that you can get is absolutely amazing. But other than that, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe, and comment down below what you think about the Halloween update. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!